Hello and welcome to Edspace, where we discuss some of the week's top headlines with Mint's editor, Sukumar Ranganathan. Welcome to the show, Sukumar. Sukumar, first off, uh, Gujarat elections. 13th of December, we had the first phase of polling. Narendra Modi is expected to come back by all counts. But there are certain things which could uh, play spoilers. For example, Keshubhai Patel's new party. How do you look at how the things are going to work out for Modi? See, we, we first have to look at the numbers. Um, the numbers are, uh, I think the final turnout numbers are now and it's around 70%, which is huge by any stretch of the imagination. It was under 60% in the last elections. I think it was around 57%. Now, traditionally, uh, higher the turnout, uh, the incumbent government doesn't really do well. But in recent elections, we've seen this trend not really working out. In Bihar, for instance, the turnout was high, but Nitish came back uh, with a significant majority. So my personal sense is, is that a 70% turnout figure probably means that it's a landslide for Modi. I could be wrong. You know, this is, uh, all of us were wrong in the 2004 general elections, for instance. But, but my sense is that he's coming back. Do I think that anyone else... Uh, including Keshubhai Patel, will play spoil sport. I think they may eat a little bit into the vote share, but I'm not so sure that they're going to uh, act as spoilers. Again, this is, it's interesting, you know, you should ask this question, because despite being one of the most covered state elections, I think the uh, intensity of extreme views that we've seen, be because the unfortunate thing is Narendra Modi is the kind of figure who is, he, he evokes extreme responses. And there is no balanced coverage if you look at it. So, so the people who uh, admire Narendra Modi believe that he can walk on water. Mm -hmm. and, and the people who don't uh, believe that he is responsible for all the world's ills live around Gujarat's ills. So, you know, I don't think there is that uh, objective balanced coverage that needs to be there. So for people outside the state, and indeed for many people in the, inside the state, it's an opaque kind of phenomenon. You, you don't know what exactly to believe. But my sense is that he will come back with a significant majority. I'm not so sure about these, you know, the things that are being said about I on Delhi and uh, playing a central role and all, all that. Uh, the last time uh, a regional leader of any stature uh, Came, close, became, to came close to becoming prime minister was, you I know. I think Jyoti Basu were. Yeah, and Jyoti Basu was yeah. nixed, right? So, um, Devagada, of course, did, but that was because it was uh, a marriage of convenience. It was a government which had some so many different constituents that they needed someone uh, whom everyone didn't dislike all that much. I, I don't think it was a positive kind of thing. So, um, we'll have to wait and see. But But I have a feeling that he will win this election very easily. Um, staying with the BJP, uh, this week in Parliament, we saw the BJP, uh, you know, raising the issue of Walmart lobbying. Uh, you know, the question was basically whether Indians, any Indians or Indian companies got money, uh, that Walmart gave money to U.S. companies or U.S. Uh, lawmakers, etc., etc. That's a different issue. Lobbying is legal there. Was this, uh, do you see this as a storm in the teacup where India is concerned and, you know, the, the way the issue was raised in Parliament, was it something totally not required? I think it was, my sense is it was a uh, case of a party which is still very, very bitter uh, from uh, the loss of uh, vote and loss of face last week. Because, you know, however much you can say uh, how you took the moral high ground and uh, you had de jure winners and all, the fact is you lost the vote. The government got its, its, its uh, FDI vote through. Um, and I think the BJP was just being a very, very bitter loser. Because here are the facts of the case. The facts of the case is, according to Walmart's own admission, in keeping with American legislation, um, it spent a certain sum of money lobbying lawmakers in the U.S. regarding its global operations. These could concern operations in India, but these are people in the U.S. who are uh, being lobbied, right? Not Indian lawmakers, U.S. lawmakers, and that's very explicit. The other thing, which is a little unrelated, is the fact 
that under the U.S. Anti-Corruption Act, which which expands to you know which 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 also includes companies and their foreign subsidiaries and other things, there are five Walmart India executives who have been suspended regarding some illegal payment payments that have been made by the company in India. So there's one issue here. There's another issue there. Uh, I think what BJP has done is to cleverly link them in some way and, and to make a lot of noise about it. Entirely acceptable on a political platform, entirely acceptable when you're in an election meeting. I'm not so sure it's acceptable in parliament. Uh, you, you know, you, you can't, parliament is supposed to be about reason and not rhetoric. But I, I just think the BJP decided it wanted to disrupt the house, so they went out and disrupted the house. The unfortunate thing is the government, I don't think, really has an option. It wants to get lots of work done in this session of parliament and, and, and a lot is hanging on it. So I, they finally said, we'll do a probe, we'll have a retired judge, but, but what's the probe going to find? Uh, you can't ask the company to give you the details of the people that lobbied in the US because that's anyway available in the public domain in, in, you know, in the US. And so I really don't know what the end game of this is supposed to be, but they probably wanted to disrupt parliament for a few days, make their point, which they did. But, yeah, sour graves. But and if if that's the level to which political discourse and debate in this country has uh, degenerated, then so be it. There, there's very little that we can do about it. Uh, moving on to the uh, RBI monetary policy, which we're expecting next week. Now, uh, uh, figures today indicate that the inflation rate, the WPI in, uh, inflation uh, rate, has come down. Do you see a interest rate cut? Because a lot of analysts are saying, no, this is not happening. But do you see that happening? See, I've said this before, and we've written, and you know, we've written on this before. There's, of course, the mint philosophy, and and there's my own views. The the mint philosophy is that there should be no rate cut. The reason being, if you look at indicators in the economy, we're still not there yet. My own sense is that if if you were to look at it from a very very purist perspective, um, as an economist, and and you look at it you can't argue in favor of a rate cut because the indicators are not there. But if you take a slightly broader picture, a slightly more pragmatic picture, I think the government has begun to do its thing. Mm -hmm. uh, not everything, but, but it's beginning to make the right kind of noises. They messed up very badly since 2004 and more so since 2009 when they came back to power. Much of the current crisis is they're doing. A little bit of it is due to global factors, but much of it is they're doing. You know, the fact that the economy has slowed down, I would blame the UPA strongly for that. Global economy, yes, but I think uh, th these people have messed up by not doing the right things. But that said, in the last four or five months, they've been trying to do the right thing. And if the Reserve Bank of India were to cut its rate, it would help. But that said, will it do so? I'm not so sure because what, what is the Reserve Bank going to do? It's going to look at one of the things, for instance, that it will look at is government debt. Mm -hmm. and, and this year is fine, but next year you, I think you have to pay around uh, 95,000 crore of government debt, which has to be paid of uh, debt that needs to be paid back. And every year after that, it's a significant sum of money that needs to be paid back. Um, and you have to get a way around this structural imbalance that is there. If RBI looks at it from that point of view, we shouldn't be expecting anything at all. How do you look at the the way the Indian economy is going to perform in 2013? You know, you, you said look at the larger picture. So 2013, you do have some reforms that the government has announced. Do you think it's going to, you know, have any kind of impact and show up in 2013? No, the jury is really out on this one. Mm -hmm. But again, my sense is we've seen the bottom. Yeah. I have a feeling that things will only improve from now on. So next year, on a consolidated basis, irrespective of how we do this year, I think we'll quite easily do between 75 basis points, that is 0 0.75 percentage points, to 1.5 percentage points higher than what we do this year. So pick a number for this year, let's say 5.5. You could do up to 7 next year. You could do at least 6.25 next year. So, you know, it will definitely go up. But I think next year, which is 13-14, will be much better than 12-13. This is the bottom.